Hey, this is Shiny Films with ProductionCrate.com. Today I'll be creating this action film title in HitFilm Express. First things first, we'll grab our assets from ProductionCrate.com. Since most of you people using the free version of HitFilm like free stuff, I've used entirely free assets. Let's start off with Soundscrate. First off, we'll pick our song. I've used the track Escape for a dramatic and yet action-filled mood. It's also important to get some bass drops. These drops are very important for the impact of the title to feel real. We'll be using bass drop 10 and 3. I like most of bass drop 10, but the beginning starts a little bit differently and too high pitched to how I'd like it, so I use bass drop 3 to fill it in with a low humming bass sound at the beginning. Let's move on to footage crate. The first asset I'll pick up is Falling Embers 1. This asset is great because it's loopable and we don't have to worry about blending it together to loop. Make sure to download these assets as MOV files to retain the alpha channel. You can change which file type you download in your production crate account settings. If you're on a PC and you've never used MOV files before, you might need to install QuickTime from Apple to get them to work in HitFilm. Our next asset is Smoky Atmosphere 1. It's a great smoky background that we'll need to use. Our final asset is this Sand Shockwave front. We'll use this to accentuate the impact of the text at the beginning when it slams down. Alright, let's jump into HitFilm and start editing. The first step is to edit your audio. I already have a comp set up here with the song in and my bass drops in as well. I faded in the sound of all the audio files with keyframes for the volume, and as I mentioned before, I let the drop 3 prevail at the beginning for that low humming bass sound, and I let the drop 10 come in a little bit later. The next step is to add the text. Create a new text layer and type in your text. Adjust the font size, typeface and colour in the text panel. And once you're done, make sure to centre it and move it down to the centre of the comp. I like changing the anchor point to do this instead of the position, and that way I still have the anchor point in the middle of the text layer for animation. Now it's time to add a texture to our image. Create a new comp out of your text layer by right clicking and selecting make composite shot. The reason we're doing this is so that we can pre-comp the texture into the text, baking it in so that when we apply the 3D effects later, it'll work on the texture itself. In this new comp, add in your image texture and scale it down to the desired scale. I just googled to find this image texture, but there are plenty of great sites out there to find image textures for 3D texturing. The next step is to apply the set matte effect to the texture. In the effect, select the text layer as your matte. This will make sure that the texture is only visible where the text is. Make sure you hide the original text layer so that we only have the textured version now. Go back to the original comp, and under the layer properties of the text comp that we created, set the dimension to 3D. Add a camera when the dialogs box tells you to do so. Now our text is on a 3D plane. But to make a 3D texture, you need to add the parallax effect. You'll notice that what it does is it pushes the text in on itself. The way the parallax works is like an ordinary displacement effect, but it pushes pixels forward or backwards in Z space. If you check invert map, it's easier to see what's going on. As we push the effect further, it pushes the darker areas of the texture backwards and keeps the light areas in front. And this gives a three dimensional aspect to our texture. You'll end up changing the value later when we add in our lights and our scene and everything, but for now, leave it on something that looks okay. You can also blur the height map to get rid of that spiky text texture that looks a little off when you push the effect too far. Now it's time to extrude our text. To do this, we're going to need a new displacement map for the extrusion. Thankfully, the original text layer will work. Go back into the text comp and copy the text layer, pasting it below the texture text layer in the main comp. Make sure to hide it and rename it. And now apply another parallax effect to the texture text layer. Make sure that this effect is applied above the other parallax effect, and that way it'll have the texturing happening in the right place. Now select the plain text layer in the height map and invert the effect and increase the depth. As you can see, this extrusion effect is pretty fake. The extruded part of the text has no texture applied to it. Instead, it looks like an ugly smear. When we rotate it on the Y axis as well, you can see it looks 3D, but it clips and fades away at the end of the layer. 
and that's because it's just a fake 3D effect projected onto a 2D layer, which results in some less than realistic rendering. If you look at it from the front though, and don't mess with the movement too much, it should look just fine. Now it's time to add some depth to our scene. Add a new light using the new layer button. By default, it creates a white point light, which is just what we want. As you move it forward in Z space, you'll be able to notice it lighting up the texture. Move it forward until it's in a proper key light position in front of the text. I also warmed up the color of the light just a little bit. I'm also adding these two spotlights on either side. These serve as backlights to light up the extruded part of the text. I made them a deeper red to add some more color into the shot, and this will match with the ember assets and flares that we'll add later. Before we add the assets though, I just want to create the animation for the text slamming down as the base drops. So I'll simply keyframe the position value. I also added a black plane layer to turn everything black before the base drops. You could also just shorten all the layers, but that's just an extra effort. It's now time to add some assets. The first one we're going to add is the loopable falling embers assets. Since the effect is only 2 seconds long and I need it to last for 10, I'll create a new comp in the media tab that is the same length, resolution and frame rate as my main comp. I'll drop in my asset and duplicate it with Ctrl D to loop it. Since it's a loopable asset, I won't have to do any blending. I'll just drag this comp into my main comp and I should be good to go. Our next asset is a little bit more tricky. I'll create a new comp like before and add the smoky atmosphere effect in. I keyframed the layer's opacity to fade in and out with each layer and I duplicated and layered them on top of one another so that the opacities faded together. I dragged this comp into my main comp below the text. Duplicate the layer so that we have another set of smoky atmosphere and drag this above the text layer. This is to sell the illusion that there's smoke in the background behind the text and also in front. I flipped the top layer on its X and Y axes and added a time reverse effect to make it look like a completely different smoke asset. I then added hue colorize effects to both layers to make them red orange. Our final asset is the sand shockwave. Drag it in at the correct time and adjust the position and scale. Right click on the layer and increase its speed under speed slash duration. I set mine to be a little higher just to make the effect quicker and to have it linger for less. I also changed the blend mode on the layer properties to screen, and I dragged on a curves effect to darken it and help it blend in better with the smoky orange background. Yes, we're almost done now. It's just time for a couple more compositing tweaks that will really sell this. Add a new grade layer and apply the shake effect. Keyframe the effect so that it dramatically increases at the beginning and slowly fades to a smaller shake at the end. Also increase the speed to something above 3 to make it a little bit more intense. Now add a light flares effect. I made a 35mm prime light flare in the top right hand corner of the video to provide an orange light source for all of our effects and also to add some interest. I also added a curves effect for a final grade. I added a tiny little bit of contrast and removed some red from the shadows and added blue to the shadows. This gives a little bit of colour contrast to the image and stops it from looking completely orange. And now for the final set. I keyframe the text's Z position to slowly move forward over time. This adds a little bit of interest and makes it less boring, and also matches the movement of the falling embers asset. In the last couple of frames, I made it move all the way until it covered the camera and then cuts to black. Make sure to turn on motion blur in these last couple of frames, as the dodgy 3D text can look pretty pixelated close up if you don't have the motion blur turned on. And that's the effect, or at least the effect that I created. Is there anything that you would have done differently? Let us know in the comments below. But whatever you do, don't forget to make it awesome.